ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't that pretty impressive? That was impressive, guys. Okay. My name is Jim Corter, C-O-R-T-E-R. -E I'm from Jonesboro, Arkansas, which is about one hour and 15 minutes northwest of Memphis, Tennessee. Anybody know where Memphis, Tennessee is? Anybody ever been on Beale Street and remember it? Okay. Beale Street is what? Kind of like, what's the name of that? Bourbon Street, New Orleans? Okay. Kind of similar, but different. A um, little bit of background about me. I'm an old HR manager. I was a human resource manager for a for, uh, Fortune 1000, two of them, 1000 company. One of them was Riceland Foods Incorporated, R-I-C-E, Rice. To give you some example of what Riceland Foods was, they're the largest processor of rice in the world setting in Jonesboro and Stuttgart, Arkansas. We produce more rice in Arkansas and process it than every other state put together. But we keep it a secret because we want y'all to think we're still dumb and don't wear shoes. Okay. I can see this is going to be a tough crowd. Okay. <laughs> So let's get started. Who is someone in here that's pretty, um, you're assertive, you're, raise your hands. You would, if I asked you a question, you'd answer it. Okay, right here. Why are you in here? Don't make up anything, just. Okay, she writes for the magazine and does follow up on the breakout session. Somebody else that raised their hand. Right over here. Need good people, okay? Somebody else, anybody else? You need great people, exceptional people, phenomenal people. Say that again? Know how to retain them. Uh, did you know a lot of companies hire top performers and run them off in the first six months? You can't treat a top performer like you do an average performer. They'll leave. They can get a job anywhere. I had a guy tell me that one. I'll have a job within a week if you fire me or if I quit. And sure enough, he did. He had a job within a week. That was back in my older days when I was young and ignorant. Now I'm old and ignorant. Okay. So you may be in here and it's about talent. Identifying it, retaining it, and developing it. Did you know almost everybody has potential, but if, if they don't develop it or you don't teach them how to develop it, then they never reach that potential. And there's something that psychologists, and by the way, I'm not a psychologist, I'm a behavioralist. I don't go inside your head, I watch your behavior patterns. Well, sometimes I go inside your head, if it's fun, okay? And some of y'all are fun, okay? So, Retaining and developing. Today's challenge to hire top performers that produce excellent or phenomenal results. Do you have the talent to meet this challenge? Many people do. Some people got some of them. Some people are still looking. So let's look at the workplace. Managing versus leading. What's the difference between managing someone and leading someone? By the way, this is participative. I'm not a lecturer. A leader shows you by example. Okay. A manager just tells you what to do. Okay. So think of it like this. When I hire people from my organization, I say, if I have to manage you, I hired the wrong person. You get to work on time. That's not my responsibility. Well, there was a train across the track. That's still not my responsibility. That's your responsibility. Manage yourself. Well, I had a flat. That's still not my responsibility. That's your responsibility. I have no intentions of managing, but I will give you effective leadership, and we'll talk about what effective leadership is. How many of you just hate to manage somebody else? It's hard enough managing yourself, okay? 
tangible versus the intangible. What do people really want? I don't know about you, but in my business, did you know about 90% of the people who approach me don't have a clue what they want? I have to help them get there. How many of y'all have people walk into your stores, they really don't know what they want, you're having to help them? Anybody? Okay. Customer service in every job. There is no such thing as a, a person that does not um, are not responsible for customer service, even if it's to your coworkers. It, I have a theory, if you treat your coworkers bad, you'll treat your customers worse. That's my theory. By the way, you are allowed to disagree with any of my theories because I'm still trying to prove most of them. Jobs have changed. All jobs require the right talent. What is talent? Who is that? Now you say, who's Michael Jordan? Did you know there's people that don't even know who Michael Jordan is, or Johnny Carson, or Ronald Reagan, or George W. Bush? And I was asking a, a millennial about two weeks ago, I said, uh, who's the Vice President of the United States? And she said, huh? I said, who is Beyonce? And she started telling me who Beyonce was, okay? So I'll get you somebody you know. Anybody know who this is? Who is this? Is he a good golfer? Okay, good golfer. That's talent, isn't it? Here's things that people bring to work. Knowledge, everybody in here knows something. So we're going to play a little, uh, remember I tell you this is participative. Tell me something that you're better at than anybody else in this room. Who cares? <laughs> this, this is where you act like Donald Trump and be narcissistic. <laughs> What's something you'd put up against most anybody that you're good at? While he's thinking, somebody raise your hand. I know they're, okay. Putting on mean conventions. Putting on meetings, meetings and, conventions. and conventions. Okay, right here's your expert. I'm a scuba diver. You're a scuba diver. Diving for 25 years. Okay. How many of you can scuba dive? Okay, a few in here. So you're in the elite part. Okay. Sir. Um, program computers. Program computers. The, man, the lady right next to you. She's a thinker. She is one of the best thinkers in the world. Okay. Anybody else? Something you'd put up against anybody because you're good. Yes. Foosball. Foosball? Cool. Okay. Uh, if if y'all can find a foosball game somewhere around, somebody challenge him. Okay. But you ought to be good at something. You ought to put, be able to put yourself up there with anybody. Don't be average. I have never woke up a day in my life and says, I think I'm going to be average today. Okay? Good Lord. Be phenomenal at at least one thing. How many of y'all are readers? You like to read books? You need to read the book half time. Don't ask me. By the way, I'm a scatterbrain. Half time, all I know is written by a coach. And he talks about when you turn 35 or 40 years old, you need to get your stuff together and start focusing in on two or three things instead of trying to do everything good. Half time. Hard skills. That could be welding. Selling is a hard skill. I always get tickled at HR people who say soft skills, and I say, well, if they're soft, why can't anybody do them? That would be hard skills. You, know, you can teach anybody to weld, but it's hard to teach somebody to get along with the welder next to them or the salesman next to them or the customer that's hard to deal with. That's hard to do. Behaviors. I had to tell a lady one time, I don't care whether you hate my guts or not. You will not curse me at work. You can hate me internally and want to cut my throat and drink my blood, but don't you curse me. 
How many of you ever heard, ever heard of T.D. Jakes? T.D. Jakes is a, um, I think he's Pentecostal minister, and one of the things he says is right here is the last privacy you got between your two ears. Just because you think it doesn't mean you should say it. Okay? Screen it. Rewards culture. Are you rewarded for selling? In other words, if you get commission, you're rewarded for selling. If you're paid hourly, I could argue you're not being rewarded for selling. You're paid an hourly wage. Personal skills. How do you get along with people? Did you know that 85% of where you go in life is your ability to communicate with anybody? Only 15% of it, based on Zig Ziglar uh, Institute, has anything to do with your skills. Now, you've got to have skills, but if you can't communicate in HR, I have seen so many people passed over because they can't communicate effectively. They get mad, they throw temper tantrums, or they won't talk to anybody. I'm a coach. I was hired one time to coach a guy to talk. Somebody would call him on the phone and says, our computers are down. He, he, he wouldn't even say, okay. He would just hang up on you, go get the computer running, go back to his office. Wouldn't speak. So they hired me. I walk in and I said, <coughs> I have one question before we get started. Are you a gamer? Yeah. You got to talk to people. This is not a video game here. This is called a workplace. Bummer, okay. <laughs> Personal skills, experience, and knowledge, their values, hard skills, and behaviors. You got to understand the job. I deal with people who will hire someone and they fall in love with somebody they like and then they hire the person and try to design the job around them instead of figuring out what the job needs and hiring that person. I see that all the time. Well, I thought he would work out. I thought she would work out. Well, surprise, surprise. Recruitment and selection, retention, development. Average cost of hiring mistakes. This is, this is a nationwide average. Three times their salary you paid them if they were there 90 days. Multiply that by three and that's what you just spent. Cost of lost knowledge, skills, contact, lost department, productivity. Whoever trained them, their sales were affected while they were training that person. So when you hire somebody, try to keep them. Here's your corporate stock value. High turnover, the lower your value is. Did you know I ha I've worked for over 300 companies since 1995? And being a consultant, I get to hear stuff that y'all don't get to hear. Oh, don't go to work for them. They're pathetic. Or, oh, you need to get a job there. They are wonderful. And if you work hard and bust your butt, they'll reward you for it. I get to hear everything in between. Low turnover, the higher your value. Your branding, I think y'all had a, a session where they're talking about branding. How you treat your employees, even... Even if you have to let them go, let them go with dignity and respect, and that gets around town. Because people that know the guy or the gal, they know why they're not working there anymore. But if they were treated with dignity and respect, you just brand in yourself one step further. Two categories, easy to master and maintain. So y'all help me out again. What's one thing in your business that's easy to learn? Anybody? Answering the phone is easy to learn when it rings. How many of y'all have ever heard Pavlo's dog? When it rings, salivate and pick up the phone. Okay. Have you ever seen people sit and watch the phone ring and do nothing about it? Yeah. When the phone rings, that's easy to master. What's something else that's easy to master? Be nice. It's not rocket science, is it? Uh, who's the smartest person in the room? Just stand up right now. Let's have fun with this. Smartest person, just stand up. Okay. 
there's only one thing that's rocket science. What is it? You're right. Okay. I told you he was the smartest person in the room. We try to make things that aren't rocket science into rocket science. Answer the phone. Be nice. There's the restroom. Get the contract signed. Those are now what are some things that are difficult to train? Sales pitch. So there's things that are easy and there's things that are difficult. Difficult to master and maintain. Commitment, what's commitment mean? Following through. Following through. Sales is not that difficult. Get up every morning and do what you've learned. This is not rocket science. Accountability. Why don't you step up to the table and say, I'm responsible. I failed. I failed out to send a, uh, a February invoice to a client up in Canada. I sent it out, told him to check and see if he got it, and he calls me back and starts apologizing. I said, you don't owe me an apology. I owe you an apology. I failed to send it. That's accountability. Just step up to the table and say, yeah, that was me. Because people can tell, did you know that the average person can tell the second you're lying? Now they may pretend they don't think you're lying, but the average person knows the second you start lying, you're the only one that believes it. What is passion? I love what I do. And here's what I, here's what I tell people, and this is a tough one. Either believe or leave. If you don't like what you're doing, go do something else, but stop telling all the customers that walk in the door how miserable you are. Here, here's the best ones. Hey, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm surviving. Well, good for you. I hope you don't do that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll make it. Be positive. Did you know you need to watch something on TED.com, TED, TED Talks? It's called The Psychology of Happiness. You program whether you're happy or not. Nothing around you does that. Only 10% of your happiness depends on your job and your family. 90% depends on what's between here, what you think about all the time. I have, I have uh, clients that say, I only want A players. I says, well, you've really limited the, the number of people out there to recruit. I don't care. I'll go through 15 before I hire one B player. I don't want ever a C player. Sometimes we make hiring a personality contest, but they interviewed so well. Well, of course they did. They wanted job. Okay. Are they a deliverer of results? So, let's talk about the four people. There's a hunter. They're driven for results. They can't help it. They get up every morning wanting that next sale. And then there's a marketer. They like to talk and they like to get people, but sometimes they have a hard time closing the sale. And then there's a farmer. You want a farmer in a job where they take care of existing customers, but to expect a farmer to go out and hustle and get more business, that's what hunters do. And then there's the analyzer. Analyzers may be real good at collections. Okay? Uh, the marketer inspiring people, they tend not to be real good at collections because they want people to like them. So you got these, and you got to figure out what you're hiring for. If you're hiring in collections, you may want a farmer or an analyzer. If, you, if you're trying to grow the snot out of a business, you may want the hunter. Six motivators. People who love to learn. What color is the second one? Gold. That's the one they bring in the gold. They are motivated by money and return on investment. If I put energy into my job, will I get rewarded? That is the number one motivator we look for in sales. 
Harmony, aesthetics. Uh, harmony is one of my lowest. You can ask, ask my wife. Harmony, I don't need harmony. I am a bull in a china closet. Okay. Did I break that? Okay. Helping and serving others. You see that a lot in missionaries. Uh, you also see it in good customer service people. Are they goal-oriented or do they, uh, are they motivated by order and tradition? Now, here's what I want you to look at. This is research. Top sales performers, their number one motivator, 72% of the time is utilitarian. That's return on investment or resourcefulness. A high utilitarian will solve a problem in spite of all the problems, in, all, in spite of all the obstacles. A low utilitarian will come and tell you about all the problems they have that keeps them from solving the problem. It's my territory. It's the economy. I had a salesperson at a um, customer one time. He had a bet. Anybody that says I have a bad, bad territory, he would take their territory and make them a bet, I'll be back at number one in six months. After about doing that five times, everybody shut up. He said it's got nothing to do with the territory, it's got what you got between your two ears. You've convinced yourself it's a bad territory. So I just want you to remember, because we're going to look at some profiles, just to admit how important that is. Now you can see top sales performers. This is a dominant person, an influencing person. You can see that there's more lead way there, but there's not a whole lot of lead way there in return on investment. So let's look at some stuff. We call these the Magnificent Seven. Can you handle rejection? You're told no, 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 and it just rolls off your back. We actually measure that in what we call the trimetrics. Can you handle stress, or does stress get to you? I know people who thrive on stress, and I know people who become dysfunctional under stress. Do you take the initiative or do you sit and wait for people to tell you to pick up the phone and call your referrals? Do you take personal accountability serious? I even know which one of these profiles has a story for everything. How many of y'all have some employees that any time you hold them accountable, they have a story? Raise your hands. They have a story. It's a certain profile that we see. I, I have to coach them, stop it with the stories and say, no, sir, I did not follow up on that call. Just fess it up. Persuading others. Can they do a good job of persuading without making it look like they're trying to pick your pocket? Results. Do they wake up every morning thirsty for results. And are they a self-starter? Uh, you've probably heard this saying, I would rather say whoa to an employee than giddy up. I'd rather say whoa than giddy up. So let's have some fun with this. Do you remember what I tell you is the number one motivator? What is, anybody remember what that one is right there? Utilitarian, return on investment, resourcefulness. Now let's just forget about this over here. Will this person make a good salesperson? Yes. That's the first thing, I, when I get a, a, an assessment back, that's the first thing I look at. Is it above the national mean and how high above the national mean is it? That's the first thing I look at. Then I go over here and I say, what am I looking for? Am I looking for a hunter? Well, a hunter is usually a D at 50 or above. A hunter is usually an I at 50 or above. A hunter is usually a low S. By the way, the lower the S, the faster they move. The higher the S, 
the slower they move. And the C, most good salespeople, many good salespeople don't care about the details. Just let me sell. Uh, I wasn't hired to do paperwork. I was hired to sell. Well, then sell, and we'll hire somebody to do the paperwork for you. I had one client. We had, a, we had 14 salespeople, and we played a little game. If you're the number one salesperson, we'll get somebody else to do all your paperwork. If you're number two through 14, do it yourself. People were fighting to become number one salesperson. Sales shot up 30% in a year's time. So we tried something different. If you're a number one salesperson, you can show up for work anytime you want to, take off anytime you want to, go on vacation anytime you want to, as long as you're number one. You drop to number two, you show up at eight, get off at five, 45 minutes for lunch. Sales shot up again. By the way, that was not my idea. That was the CEO's idea. He tried it and it worked. Let's look at another one. What do you think about this one? Remember, we're looking for the utilitarian. Okay, here's what's going to happen to this person. This is about learning. And this is about power. They're going to need to learn too much. They're going to want power, but they're going to have a tendency to not deliver. But they're a good talker. And they will, this person right here will blow your socks away in an interview. But they interviewed so well. well of course they did. Why couldn't they? Actually, what they do, they'll sell and get to a certain point making so much money and they get comfortable and then they stop being a hunter and start becoming a farmer. What about this person? Okay, that's what I told them. I told the company, no, this is what we call an outlier. For all practical purposes, this lady should not be a salesperson. She's in the top five out of 20 salespeople. <clears throat> and it goes against all the odds. She's a farmer that's not motivated by money. And so I ask her, I don't understand this. You got hired and you're in the top five, and here's what she said. I got tired of being poor. I'll do whatever it takes to make money. I want a new car. I want a new house. I want to go on vacation. I want to go to Germany. But she wasn't motivated by money. She wanted power over her freedom. This is what we call an outlier. I would have never seen it, would have never guessed it. So I usually tell my clients, by the way, she had previ previous experience, and we say that experience, good experience, trumps an assessment. The assessment is now for managing them or showing them leadership. What about this person? Low utilitarian. They were a marginal salesperson. But they were dominant. They were friendly. They knew everything. They just couldn't close a sale. And before you even asked for a discount, they'd offer it to you. Don't ever offer a discount that nobody's asked for. What about this one? Is this a salesperson? Yes. But between this and this, we call this person a force to be reckoned with. They are very difficult to manage, but if you can manage them, it usually takes somebody just like them to manage them. If you can manage them, they will deliver the sales, but don't get in their way. They don't mix words. By the way, we put this guy right, right here up in Canada, one of the hardest territories to build. He didn't care. Now, you haven't seen this. I just want you to, I want you to show you. We do it at trimetrics. The first one is behaviors. The second one is what you're motivated by. But then I look at this stuff right here. I want to show you three people that should have never been hired. See this right here? 
It's well below five. It's at 4.6. And when I saw this come through, these are my exact words. Please, God, tell me you didn't hire this person. Oh, Jim, you're going to be wrong on this one. Please, God, tell me you didn't hire him. Yeah, we hired him. You're going to be wrong on this one. He crippled an entire engineering department, run off half of the engineers before we could get rid of him, and he threatened a lawsuit all the way. By the way, in answering the questions, I won't tell you all the questions, but one of them is how would you rate torturing an innocent person to death? Ten is, that's a real good statement. I agree with that. Number one is, that's a horrible statement. He rated it number five. The client says, why don't you interview him because I'm sure that was a mistake. Here's his exact words. Every once in a while you have to kill somebody's ass to get everybody else's attention. Okay? Now I just want to ask you, do you want him working for you? Okay? This lady was one of the best. She was hired into human resources. She was one of the best people you could ever interview. Now we got two things here. She doesn't deliver, and she knows better than you do. So when they would say, we want you to file it in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, she would say, I'll take care of it. And she'd just go throw them everywhere. I mean, she was a belligerent, conniving, think up your own words. It took a year to get rid of her with threatened lawsuits. By the way, both of those people I showed you have been fired at every job since they left my clients. Now let's talk about you hire somebody, here's what you got to do to keep them. You got to model the way. What's it mean to model the way or set the example? If you don't want them to yell at the customer, then doggone it, don't yell at them. I have seen people say, by the way, this is my wife, so, okay. I have seen people do, how dare you talk to a customer like that? If you ever do that again, I'll fire you. Well, I wonder why they talk to the customer like that. Because that's how their boss talked to them. You've got to model the way. Inspire a shared vision. I have a client, they build dust filters for a for companies all around the world. You know, just kind you put in your ceiling at home. They came up, they thought building dust collectors, that's not very inspiring. So here's what they do now. <clears throat> Clean air is a human right. You have the right to go into a plant in Puerto Rico and come out breathing well and being safe and being healthy. That's a human right. They got employees excited about When you t ask an employee now in the factory, what do you do? They says, oh, we make sure people go into a mine in Chile and come out alive. That's what we do. They don't build filters anymore. That's inspiration. What do y'all do? Y'all make it possible for someone that's got a washing machine that's broke down to wash their kids' clothes and make their kids look clean. That's what y'all do. That's one of the many things you do. You don't sell washing machines. Get away from that kind of stuff. Start talking about the dream, and probably many of you do that. When I teach real estate agents, I say, you don't sell houses. You build homes for the kids to play in the backyard and the dog to romp around and stop selling houses and start giving them homes, dream homes. You got to challenge everything you do. You should wake up every week and say, how can we do a better job of customer service and a better job of selling? How can we do a better job of collecting while not alienating the people in the process? Challenge everything you do every week. Train them and then get out of their way. I walked into a place one time, Dairy Queen, and I said, I want a banana walnut milkshake. And I said, we don't have that on the menu. I said, do you have bananas? 
And they said, yes, sir. And I said, do you have walnuts? And they said, yes, sir. And I said, I want a banana walnut milkshake. They said, but it's not on the menu. Somebody didn't empower, enable that. Come on, give the guy a banana walnut milkshake. Charge him extra for it. I didn't care. Charge me $10. Give me a banana walnut milk. But she couldn't do it. And then I've gone into places where I ask for some weird stuff, and they say, no problem. I'll take care of that. They were enabled. And then you've got to catch people doing things right and encourage their heart. Okay? Somebody uh, tell me an employee in the last month that's done something awesome. Just any employee. Anybody tell me something. that They did something and you were pretty impressed. Anybody? Yes, sir. Okay. Not standard operating procedures in the business, but boy, that sure made an impact on our business. Yeah, he was a shop guy, water leak, and he fixed it. Was that in his job description? He's not a plumber, is he? Did it anyway, didn't it? Okay. That's where you encourage their heart and tell them, you know, by the way, here's something that's meaningless. Good job. What does that mean? Why don't you identify, hey, I appreciate that you jumped through hoops when we had that water leak and got it fixed. Now he knows the behavior attached to why he's getting bragged on. Good job means nothing. And if you're guilty of saying good job, stop doing it. I really appreciate the way you talked to that lady. She was real upset. And within three minutes, I saw you calm her down versus good job. Identify a behavior that they can repeat. I don't know what to repeat on good job. By the way, that's a book. Jim Kuntz and Barry Posner, they did the research on hundreds of companies and said, is there anything that floats to the top that makes great companies great? Look here, M-I-C-E, mice, add another E to it. Model, inspire, challenge, enable, encourage. By the way, if you hire a top performer and don't challenge them the first day, they're already bored. A top performer wants you to give them something almost impossible to accomplish. Give them a challenge. Feedback, the breakfast of champions. I was taught this by a company out of Calgary, Canada. So it's not my saying. I've seen it in lots of other places. Feedback, the breakfast of champions. Giving feedback, receiving feedback, and it's as simple as this. I want you to tell me two or three things that I've done well in your training this week. So you got a new employee? Every Friday for six weeks, tell me two or three things we've done really well in your training this week. Now tell me one thing I can improve next week. What are you training them do, to do by three and one? Acknowledge there is some positive stuff going on here. Don't train employees to just notice all the bad stuff. Train them to catch and notice the good stuff. I did this with a woman called Rebecca Miller when I first hired her, and she told me after this process for six weeks, nobody has ever done that for me. I really appreciate it, and for the next six weeks, I want you to tell me three things I do well and one thing I need to do better. That, went on, that process went on for 12 weeks. She's been with me 14 years. Key expectations, learn a sales process. And by the way, I happen to use one that's similar to Sandler, S-A-N-D-L-E-R, sales system. And the reason I use it, a client introduced it to me, and in two years' time, I doubled my sales. I thought it was a bunch of hogwash until I started practicing it. I don't care which system you use, use it. Write this one down. 60% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Have a sales system. You want to know what mine is? 
Build rapport up front and do it quickly. Get an upfront contract, yeses or noes. Do they have any pain or are they seeking any pleasure? Do they have any money? Can they make a decision? Close the sale. And by the way, did I really make a sale? See, I've got my seven steps memorized where I can use them every time. Practice, practice, practice. I had a guy tell me one time, he says, I love the seven habits of highly effective people. And I says, really? He said, yes, I read that book about two years ago. And I said, tell me one of the habits. He said, excuse me? I said, tell me one of the habits. He couldn't do it. If you're not going to use it, don't waste your time reading the book. Prospect, prospect, prospect. Did you know right now most of my clients were brought to me by other clients getting referrals. Ask for referrals over and over again. How many of y'all do that consistently? You sell something. Do you know of anybody else that might need a new washer, new tires, new wheels, whatever it was, new stereo system? How many of y'all do that consistently every time you make a sale? Raise your hands. Okay, a lot of improvement. That will start bringing more money over a period of about three or four months to you. Prospect, prospect, referral, referral, practice, practice, practice. Here's a summary. Understand the limitations of the interview. They are there to get a job. They will tell you anything you want to hear. Here's the stupidest question that you can ask somebody, and I want you all to remember to never ask this. Do you think it's important to be dependable and honest? No, sir. I lie like a dog and I'll never show up for work. What do you think they're going to say? Yes, sir, I'm very honest. Even if they're a crook, yes, sir, I'm very honest and very dependable. Don't ask that question. Ask behavioral questions. When was the last time you got in a fist fight? I actually had a guy tell me, sir, I've only had three fist fights this month. I'm getting better. <laughs> well, good for you. Okay. When, uh, have you used marijuana within the last three weeks? No, sir, it's been at least seven weeks. Well, thank you very much. You'd be surprised what people ask you or would answer. Assessments. Know who you're hiring before you hire them. What, what are they motivated? What's their behavioral pattern? And do they have uh, high scores? We can even check the scores. I can tell a top performer just by adding up the scores, and if they bust, if you add up all the scores and they bust 500, they're in top performer category. Use the assessment to unleash the employee's potential. I got some clients uh, in the rent of the own. Uh, how many of y'all know David Harrison? We train, we train his salespeople every month, and we have been doing it for three years every month for three years and we take a new, new group every year. They're trained over and over again and they have to memorize. Do I, give, do I give money away to the people who memorize? I'll hold a $20 bill and I'll say, if you can just, if you can just quote the seven steps of Sandler, you get 20 bucks. I gave away 80 bucks last week. Get them to memorize it and they'll use it. My name is Jim Corder. I'm a certified professional behavioral analyst. I'm a senior professional of human resources management. I've been certified since 1997 on one of them and since 1987 on the other. There are 2,500 distributors in Target Training International. I am in the top 50 nationwide in Canada. I'm not doing that to brag. I want you to know who's talking to you. If I didn't believe this stuff and if I didn't know it wouldn't work, I wouldn't be here telling you. Um, any questions? Uh, there are business cards. Not, I don't appeal to everybody if you want to know more about my assessments. How many of you are already using assessments of some sort? Okay. I do not go in on any other distributors, even if it's another company. I don't rob other people of your business. And if you've got somebody that's doing a good job for you and you trust, doggone it, don't change. Okay. That's what I tell my clients. Okay. But here's a business card if you want it. Um, got my email on there, okay? Uh, I need 
five volunteers real quick because you're going to run and pass out these things. Once you get them, just hold on to them. Don't do anything. Five volunteers quickly. Okay? And what you, you're going to give them out randomly. There's not enough in here for everybody. Just grab you a few. Just give them out randomly. Everybody won't get one. Do it quickly. Act like you've got two minutes to live. Okay. While they're doing that, how, how are my assessments done? They're all done online. It takes about 40 minutes. I usually recommend you don't do them on shop people. You do them on sales people or on management people or if you're going to promote somebody to management. But I typically don't do uh, assessments uh, on shop people. Now, we do once David has a shop person that says, I want to become a salesperson, then that's when we do a profile. It's all done online. All I have to have is an email address on them. What? Oh yes, you don't profile everybody. You narrow it down to your top two or three um, candidates and you only profile them. But if you've got 15 candidates, don't profile 15 candidates. Narrow it down to your top two or three and then I'll tell you which one uh, is. Uh, and we got those spread out all over here. Okay. By the way, if you don't have my business card, uh, the business card is on the table, okay, and my email address, and here's the deal. It has to be separate companies, so you can't profile your entire team at a company. I will give one free assessment to the first 20 different companies that send me an email that just says, I want the free one, jerk, <laughs> uh, or, or something like that, okay. You don't have to use jerk, okay. I want the free one, the first 20 different companies, okay? And I have a way of knowing. Remember, I'm a profiler, okay? I can already tell the wheels are churning in sun of your head on how to get 20 free ones, okay? So don't do that, okay? 20 free ones, don't tell me anything about the person. I'll debrief you and I'll tell you about the person, okay? And if I'm not fairly accurate, don't do business with me. If I'm fairly accurate, consider it, okay? Now, who got, hold up, who got the uh, little uh, Hot Wheels, okay? <clears throat> Let me show you what an assessment is. Inside this bag is a human being of some sort. We just don't know what kind of human being it is. We don't know whether it's a salesperson, a red, a blue, a yellow, or a green. We don't know whether it's an analyzer or what. Do you know what an assessment is? Open them up. Tear them open and see what you got. Okay. How many of you think we're going to call a race car a hunter? Somebody could sell. How many of you got a race car? Stand up. It's a race car. Okay. You can sit down. How many didn't get a race car? Stand up. You didn't get a race car. Okay. All an assessment is, it's telling you whether you're getting a race car before you hire them. Thank you very much.